Hello everybody and welcome to the brand new shader tutorial in Godot engine. Uh, in this video we are going to introduce to you uh, the shading language in Godot and why is the shader useful. So first of all what is shader? Imagine that we have this picture that uh, it has a bunch of pixels in it and each pixel has a color. And as you know, each color has three values, red, green, and blue. So uh, with the mixture of the red, green, and blue, we can create uh, any kind of the color that you can imagine. So imagine that you want to do some kind of operation on each pixel. For example, I don't know, maybe we want to make it um, uh, brighter or darker, or we want to blur the pixel, or any kind of the operation that that we need to calculate for each individual pixel. So, if you want to do that kind of the operation with CPU, as you know, the CPU can only do one task at a time and it is not too efficient. So, what we can do is going to use GPU. GPU can run thousands of the operation at the same time and uh, and it is really efficient but for this kind of the work so we should do these things with the gpu so each of these pixel run that operation at the same time and we do that by sending a, a small program called shader to the gpu we go we, we send it to the gpu and we say run this uh, shader for all pixels in the screen and it will run it so now we are going to talk about the shading language okay that we are going to use in the godot in that shading language we have a different type of the variable the for example we have float and integer you already know if you are have a background of the programming you already know what is float and what is integer we also have vector2 type, which has uh, two components, x and y component. Also vector3 type, which has uh, three components, x, y, and z. And vector4 component, which has uh, x, y, z, and w. And all of these components are float number. So if we want to define a float number, we can write vector2, for example, the name of the variable, direction here, and vector2, the first component and the second component. And we can access each component by putting a dot and dot x or dot y. We can also define the, our component with RGB, because we, you know, we work a lot with the color, and as, you, as I told to you, each pixel uh, defined by three color red green and blue so we can define our vector by rgb and in the case vector 4 we have rgb and a which a is a transparency so we can define our vector like this and we can access like direction r and direction dot g which is this first component and the second component all right so coordinate system Imagine that we have a um, uh, picture on our screen. Our screen has a coordinate system, okay? This is a coordinate, uh, coordinate system that we studied in the school. But the coordinate system for our screen uh, in the shading language is like this. This is the positive x, and this is the 0, 0 point. And here is um, 1, 0, and here is uh, 0, 1, and here is 1, 1, which is a little bit off so if okay so if i have a picture here each each pixel has a coordinate which we define with a capital u v uh, and it has two components x and y and it starts from zero to one in each direction okay so let's see these things by code i already created a new godot project okay I create a color rect. You can use also a sprite or any kind of the other uh, things like a sprite, animated a sprite, and all of them have the shader. So I make it full rect, and in the material section, 
I create a new shader material. Here I create a new shader. And as I click on that, uh, a part here is open for me that I can write my shader, shading, uh, shader uh, program here. So the first thing that we should do is to type the shader type. We have different shader shader type as you can see it's written also down here canvas item particle and special. In our case because we work with 2D our shader type is canvas item. So I will write shader type. If you work if you work in 3D it your you you should write a special for example. But in our card case is canvas item and this item okay and that error is gone and our main function for the shader is fragment shader so this rectangle has a lot of pixel in it okay and each pixel is going to run this function okay and you know what each pixel has a color okay so at the end of this fragment uh, fragment function, this value should define our color. So if I define this value by vector 4, for example, blue is 0, red is 0, and this one is 0, and for alpha is 1. So, so I define uh, the color, each pixel in this screen run this color uh, uh, run this fun fragment function and at the end the each one has the color of black which R G B all of them is zero for example if I change the first variable is to one it's going to be uh, red and the color value are defined between zero and one so zero is no red and one is all red it is same as for the green, for example. Zero is no green, and one is completely green. And also, if I I can put some mixture, for example, the yellow color. So, as I told you, each pixel has a coordinate, and that coordinate is given to us by a, a coordinate system called UV. I can define a two. Uh, <coughs> Uh, a vector 2 called uv and put the value uv in this okay so here i can write uv.x and uv.y let's see what happened so as you can see here here is a black because red and green part of this is zero and zero here is red completely red because the x component is one and here also is uh, completely green because the y component is already one so uh, in the shading language you cannot print something instead you should debug like that you should put your information on the screen and you can see how does it work so so as I told you, we can define float and vector2. So imagine I want to define a vector2 like uh, i, I don't know, maybe direction is going to be vector2, mm, half and half. Okay. So uh, I define the this uh, direction or uh, or I can say color. Let's put it color, color half and half. So here I can write uh, uh, maybe color dot x color dot y maybe. Okay, all right. So we have a color that the first one is half. The second one is half and the third one is uh, zero. We can also change this to this. And these things are equal. It means this one is same as this one. 
if if you want to define a a vector two that all of its components are the same, you can define like this. Okay, if I put here one, it should be defined like this. For float, if I define want to define a float uh, variable, I all should always should put a dot at the front of it. If I don't put dot, we have an error. You should put dot or maybe zero, but dot is enough and it's going to be okay. So, uh, so now imagine that you want to define a vector, uh, vector uh, three, okay, which first two component is one and the second component and the third component is half. So I say vector three color two is equal to vector two um, <coughs> one one and half. Okay. I can write like this oh you have error. Okay, because I write here vector three. Okay. So I write like this, but also I can make it more easier and like write like this because we have already a vector uh, two that has first two component one like this. So I can write like direction. It is this is the same as before also. Okay, color sorry, same as before. Yeah. I or also I can write like this. For example, I want to. Okay, so here also I can write like this. Uh, color two, and it is vector three, so I can write like this. So I define a vector four that the first three components are in this color two, and the last component is one. So this is a basic introduction to the uh go dot shading language in the next video we are going to create a small circle in the screen only with the help of the go dot shading language